Welcome to Beyond Markets. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Esther Awuni. On today's program, we'll discuss Nigeria's ease of doing business reforms. Now, the World Bank's 2019 Doing Business Index reported an improvement in Nigeria's ease of doing business score from 51.52 points to 52.89. The report also ranked Nigeria 146 out of 190 countries. Jumoke Oduwale, Secretary of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council and Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President on Industry, Trade and Investment, joins me now to discuss this. Jumoke, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you. Always. Let's start with the latest ranking. Obviously, that is <laughs> a good place to start. So we, uh, Nigeria ended up at 146. We moved up on a point mark, but not enough to move the need needle to, uh, to take us up on the ranking. 146, how did you receive this? Well, you know, it's slightly disappointing because a lot of agencies uh, pulled in quite a bit of effort and quite a bit of reforms were undertaken this year. Well, the fact is that's why we emphasize that we're interested in the impact and in communicating so that private sector can feel the effect of the reforms and validate them. So it's a perception index, uh, a lot of reforms are on the table, about nine reforms left on the table across five indicators. And we know that, yes, we may have hovered around the same point this year, but we're looking forward to another bumper leap next year. Okay, so let's, let's take stock, because uh, the, the mandate of PEBEC, of course, is to remove bureaucratic uh, constraints mm -hmm. to doing business in Nigeria, and I know that a lot has been achieved. But let's talk us through where we are right now in terms of what, you, what has been achieved so far and what you're focusing on going forward. So this cycle, we focused on the 10 indicators above the, the whole spectrum. Last year, we had focused on seven areas. This year, we put a lot of emphasis on the revision of the Companies and Allied Matters Bill. We were able to pass it through the Senate and we're looking forward to passing it through the House of Reps. This is a bill that has not been uh, amended in 28 years, almost two decades. Really had a lot of traction and support, collaborating with the National Assembly on getting that ready. Really a lot of support from the Senate and also looking forward to having the House pass it. The import of this bill is that it touches almost uh, five indicators, areas like minority protection, insolvency, getting credit. Um, so it's, it's, a new, it's a really uh, important bill for the business climate. Okay, now I'm looking at the list, because it, like I think it's nine or 10. Uh, on that list, getting the electricity, registering a property, getting credit, paying taxes, uh, trading across borders. Now across this list, like I said earlier, I know a lot has been achieved. Talk us through, maybe not all of them, but the ones that you say that you've recorded, uh, you've achieved what you set out um, to achieve. Yeah, so with starting a business, the Corporate Affairs Commission continued to leverage on technology, closing the manual procedures, and that made sure that the World Bank was able to recognize and that indicator moved up by 10 points. Okay. Um, areas like trading across borders, which has been a particularly difficult one, we made some traction progress. The ports are now open 24 hours, but as everybody knows, we have a serious challenge with the gridlock. So we moved up just one point. So there's a lot of effort going on, but there's still, it's a nuanced conversation and we're in that phase in the economy where we're trying to underpin the reforms and make sure that they're really entrenched. It's important for private sector to know what the reforms are and to demand them so that they, they become systemic. Uh, not just uh, an intervention because there's this uh, room for slippage and so we try to measure the MDAs and make sure that these reforms are deepened and they become entrenched in the system. So now, that's where we're at okay, right now. For, for issue around the ports, I know that, like you said, that's a very challenging one, but I know you're not working alone. You work with some of these agencies on yes, the ground. Yes. What is the body language and is there an overall appreciation of what PEBEC is setting out or set out to achieve and how it also benefits them if you know it's achieved at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. We work with several of the agencies that are at the at the seaports and the airports. We work with the Nigerian Customs Service. They've been working on their single window portal. There's been conversations around that for about two years now. They launched their NICES 2, which is a good step in the right direction, but we're still looking at having a national trading platform that incorporates a ports community portal as well as scanners in the ports. So there are a number of, of issues, a single interface. That has been a reform that was done over a year ago, 
but making sure that it works and that private sector would validate to external assessors that it's working all the time, not just sometimes. It's the same thing at the airports. We continue, even though it's not a World Bank indicator, we continue to work on interface between the several agencies at the seaports, SON, NAFDAQ. We've tried to reduce the number of agencies at the ports, try to streamline the procedures, bring in technology. These are things that just must be done if we're going to move that needle. Okay, let's move on to other things like uh, construction permits, for mm -hmm. instance. I know that is a key one. Talk to us about that. Yeah, construction permits is in the purview of the states. We worked very well with the state governments, Lagos and Kano State. Lagos State took a, a huge stride removing uh, infrastructure development uh, levy that was really quite expensive for SMEs to build their warehouses in Lagos. Uh, that was done about March this year, but private sector did not validate that that particular cost had, had stopped being charged. So that was really disappointing because there was a lot of political will behind that and we have the data. So while World Bank recognized that that reform was done, that's one of the reforms that was recognized as done on ground, but private sector has not yet validated. So we have a lot of work to do communicating with stakeholders and getting them to test it and tell us whether or not, you know, whatever feedback, whatever needs to be tweaked, but we're determined to continue. But has this been done? Have, have you it's reached out? And, okay. Oh, yes. It's not, but the communication, I must say, is a continuous process. We engage with stakeholders. We have stakeholder workshops. We have focus groups. But if you don't get that validation externally, then that means that something has still not been connected. But I know for a fact in Lagos State, and we have the records, that that fee is no longer charged. Okay. Yeah. Also on the payback list is getting credit. Talk mm -hmm. to us about that. Yeah, getting credit, we have uh, the robust uh, enabling environment. We were number six in the world last year. This year, we moved down to 12 in the world, not because we slipped in any way, but because others improved mm -hmm. further. So that's also the relativity of it. But what we've been saying, since the government has given this enabling environment, financial institutions need to take that further risk with SMEs because they now have a collateral registry, they now have access to credit histories. So we're really trying to partner with private sector and with the financial institutions like BOI, Development Bank that have a, a government component to make sure that they encourage the, the funding, the access to credit for SMEs. So that's all the government, I mean, on your end for PEBEC, that's all you can do. You can yeah. just encourage because yeah. it's a financial system yeah. and you cannot force banks you can't force to, bank. to, but to we, give but we really try money. to to speak with especially the microfinance banks that you can be sure that you can take more of a risk because these, these are structures in place legally. The credit bureaus are legally backed. The, the National Collateral Registry is a, a portal where around the country, whatever equipment, because the fair is always movable uh, equipment and chattels. Someone can leave uh, Lagos and go to Kano, get another charge on it. So we've put these uh, legal frameworks in place for the confidence, but changing that market behavior is proving slower than expected. Do you look at some of, we're gonna go through some of the other items on the payback list. Do you look at some of these items and say to yourself, okay, maybe when we started out, it looked like this could take a couple of months, but now that we're, we've gotten right into it and we've seen all the variables and it might take maybe a lot longer than we hmm. originally anticipated. Yeah. I might have to maybe not take it off yeah. the list, but just you know, put it aside and say, you know what, this one, this is a difficult one. <laughs> well, there, there's some of our reforms that we would have liked to see much faster. For instance, it's not a World Bank thing, but the concessioning of the airports was approved um, at the Federal Executive Council. We would have liked to have delivered a brand new airport in Lagos. The one in Abuja is almost completed now. So, you know, it's, it's and the one in Port Harcourt is, is completed, but we really wanted to make this happen for Lagos. Also, things like the, the ports, the single window, it's really game changer. Every country in West Africa has basically sorted that out. We've been really trying to work with all the agencies concerned to make this happen. So there's some big ticket ones, and of course, the legislation, partnering with the National Assembly to deliver that for Nigerian people, also a very important one. We've worked very well with the judiciary. We have a small claims court launched in Lagos. Kano has already passed the bill. So these are things that, you know, they take a lot of collaboration, including private sector, mm -hmm. to really test the reforms and validate them when they find it to be so. You know, at, a, at the heart of this too, I know that, <clears throat> excuse me, I know that you're dealing with, most times obviously you're dealing with people. And I asked earlier, is there an appreciation of what, of, is everybody on the same page? Would you say that there's 
I know you're also working against changing mindsets. Mm -hmm. I think we've discussed this before. Is that changing? I would say yes. I would say that it's, a, it's definitely a marathon, not a sprint, mm. because we're dealing with uh, multifaceted issues. What we have noted as learning points, because we actually had a council meeting earlier this week, what we, we've noted as learning points are when you have the head of the agency very reform-minded and open to technology, you see that cascading through the, the agency and you see the line officers, not one or two people, but the, the rank and file going with the flow of the leadership. So you can, you can take Nigerian Immigration Service, for instance, uh, progressing very well. And we've had several validations about things being smooth at the airports. Mm -hmm. You have a Corporate Affairs Commission embracing technology and embracing the public reforms. You have FIRS really embracing technology. And we have commitment from the leadership. Anytime I want to meet with uh, the executive chair, he makes himself available with the team. And they working with us to iron out the challenges in e-filing, e-payments, really going through the motions. When you have less commitment from uh, the top of, of an organization, then it's, it's a lot more challenging. Let's talk about electricity. Mm -hmm. That, I, I, I would say, is also a tricky one. Well, how much progress have you been able to achieve? Well, with electricity, you know, we focus on the procedures to access the grid. So we actually moved up one point uh, this year, but we're trying to make sure that private sector, these are reforms that are already done and have been done for a year. For instance, it used to take about nine different steps. Now it takes five steps to access the grid uh, to make sure that companies and businesses that have new premises and want to access the grid know that it's a lot of a simpler process. We are not the ones that work on the hard infrastructure, uh, as you know, but the soft infrastructure and the, and the bureaucracy around connecting to the grid. There's been significant uh, improvement. We've worked very well with NERC and with the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing and with the DISCOs actually, okay. uh, both in Lagos and Kano and across the country. And I would like to say something about the subnational ease of doing business. As you're aware, the report was released on the 18th of October. And for the first time, we had 100% participation across all the states. Now, Nigerian states, only about four of them did not improve. About 32 of them improved. And you had states like Kaduna, Enugu, Anambra, Lagos, having a long trajectory from where they were in 2014 to where they were measured now in 2018. Now, what this proves is that the model is working. I hold that thought for us. We'll take a short break. And we we'll thank you for your time so far. I've been speaking. Welcome back to you, Beyond Marcus. Still with me on today's show is Jumakeo Duwale, Secretary of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council. Jumake, thank you for your time so far. Now let's pick up from where we left off. When 20, 2018 is gradually coming to an end, what would you say were the biggest achievements this year for PEBEC? Hmm. This year, we released uh, our annual report on Executive Order 1, the first uh, one year completed. We also released a report that just chronicled right from 2016 all the reforms that have been done. It's amazing how the conversations have developed from talking about like six manual forms, we're now talking about slow websites, uh, slow portals. So it's interesting to, it was interesting to look back and just uh, chronicle and see just how far we've come. Of course, there's still so much to do, but it was a very important step when we measured uh, the executive order and participation of, of ministries, departments, and agencies, it was interesting to see the, the repeat good performers, and it sort of made everybody ginger up. So that was a very important one. In July, the council approved, this is now going into what we're working on okay. currently. Uh, we've been working on, of course, continuing our, our legislative intervention, working with the National Assembly on the passage of the CAM bill, with the House of Reps, and then working on our omnibus bill. We drafted an omnibus bill, and we're currently engaging with uh, members of uh, the public, uh, private sector, really key stakeholders in certain sectors, and also engaging with the agencies themselves because we want to make some adjustments to some of their legislations. We also started a regulatory reform program 
And we took two agencies as pilots. We took NAFDAQ and NICOM. Okay. That started in July. And of course, we continue with our subnational intervention across all the states and the FCT. Now, I know that you've received a lot of feedback this year. Talk to us about what, how the kind of feedback you've received and how, or what the, the, the feedback taught you in terms of how you were able to perhaps take a second look at some of the processes and some mm -hmm. of the items on your list and just made them better. Yeah. So the nice thing about the feedback is that while it used to be overwhelmingly negative, it's now nuanced. People are now acknowledging when they see uh, things that they find have been very useful for them. So our Pepec.report app, it's a web-based application, and we have two kiosks at Lagos and Abuja airports. We've been having quite a bit of traction. We have an 88% resolution rate, and we track the agencies. So you have the top five agencies' responsive time. It's supposed to be 72 hours. But even when they exceed the 72 hours, they are resolving. So I think making sure that customer care is improving and more and more agencies are aware that they're being watched, they're being tracked, uh, that has been very useful. I think consequence management is, is so key. Another thing that has been important is um, being able to respond to pain points of uh, SMEs, working with NAFDAQ to simplify renewal processes and onboarding processes for new products. This is something that the Vice President had heard repeatedly across in his SME clinics because it, it speaks to the very micro people having shea butter businesses, Zobo businesses, mm -hmm. all the way up to sophisticated are, companies. Are these regular? The SME or meetings yes, or where? Yes, yes, where you his SME clinics. He goes around the country almost monthly. He's been to over 20 locations now. Oh, he okay. started in Abai in 2016. Yes. So he goes with BOI, with uh, CAC, with NAFDAQ, a couple of, I mean, you know, the vice president. We also have, from the office of the vice president, we have the trader money, we have the G program. These are interventions on his social investment uh, agenda. Those two uh, credits are implemented at the Bank of Industry. So, so that's a really, that one has really, I mean, again, with the use of technology, it's a, it's a, it's a, a loan, a small loan, that starts from 10,000 Naira, and you can pay back and then get 20 payback. And, and it's really all electronic. So people that have never had a bank account can get it on an electronic wallet, partnering, BOI partnered with one of our Nigerian tech companies to deliver that. So can you confidently say that the, the private sector, the business community, the SMEs, know that there is a PEBEC that is working to make their lives a lot easier? What I would say is that a lot more people know every day, but this is why we're always glad to honor your invitations because it's a big country and there's several uh, levels of stakeholders that we're discussing with, uh, right from the very micro, the market traders, up to the sophisticated institutional investors. It's a, it's a big uh, spectrum. We work with about 50 MDAs that have interface with the business climate, but concentrate on about 15. But the communication, if it's one thing we've learned, you ask me what we've learned is that communication is key. We intend to continue. We go around the country um, having regional stakeholder events. In fact, we have two coming up for the Southeast in Imo on the 4th of December and okay. for the South South at Acquire Bomb. And we've met at the Ogun State one mm -hmm. last year. And so we've been going around. We've been to Gombe. We've been to, um, of course, we've, we've had at FCT. Lagos and Kano are regular, but we've also been to Kaduna, Ogun, Oyo. Um, Edo, several places. So, so do you, wa do you walk away with a feeling of, oh, okay, w w there's an appreciation of what we're doing, or, or, or plus, there's more for us to do, or wow, it's, it's, people are not feeling it, this impact? So it's or is it a mixed. Combination of, okay. It's mixed, depending on where you go. Like when we went to Abba um, in the summer, we went to Abba about July, and we found that not many people even knew about Pebec or what we've done. Uh, we went to Edo, somebody was complaining about having to travel to pay his taxes, but we go with the agencies. So we're able to tell him, you don't need to go anywhere. Online, you can file your taxes, you can pay your taxes. So it's always a delight to educate. We do a lot of social media, but we need to do more. Um, those that know, demand for more, mm. which is also good. I'm always impressed when we're talking about, oh, this portal is slow, this portal crashed. Because two years ago, we weren't talking about portals. So it's been a journey, and we know that we have different audiences. 
Some people have been right there with us from the beginning. They know all about the project. Some have still not heard of it. So we, we and it's a small team. We're just about 20 people. And there is no way because have, uh, I'm thinking, do you have to actually go physically to other states? Isn't there a way, uh, some mechanism or, I don't know, an office or some way that they can learn about Pebec in their state, even before oh, you yes, come to there them? there is. That's why I said we replicated the Pebec model. So every state has a reform champion that coordinates all the reforms. Okay. And what we've been uh, encouraging states to do is have more stakeholder engagements, which is why there was a lot more validation this year. The World Bank report, you see that, that Nigeria really just moved to the right. Very, very delightful result. And that just shows that the, the system works. And it's not enough for a state or for the federal government to deliver reforms. If the people you're delivering them for are not aware, cannot use them and validate them, then you don't have that impact yet. So we continue to work on this, and it's really probably our biggest um, deliverable for this coming cycle is really engagement and communication, because for sustainability, we want to deepen these reforms and make them systemic. The only way to do that is to have the demand side pull from the private sector. Mm, absolutely. Now, I know that for 2017, you did set a target in terms mm -hmm. of moving up you know, places on the World Bank Index. You, did you do that for 2018? No, we didn't do that for 2018. What we said was that by 2020, we want to be top 100. The reason why we don't focus on rankings solely is because we know that this is a journey. We studied the, the strategies globally for moving a reform clim a, a climate, um, reforming a business climate significantly, and it takes quite a lot. Uh, this year, Africa was the top reforming region with over 100 reforms. Last year, also top reforming with 88. Nigeria had five reforms last year. This year, we had four, our second highest. But on the table, we have nine that we're looking to consolidate. Imagine we had had those nine. Some of them, the World Bank said, were too close to the deadline. Mm. Some of them, they said, the private sector has not validated. So also, there's a lag. So we didn't bother setting a target for this year. We looked more medium term. By 2020, we want to be sub-100. If we continue at the pace we are, working with the National Assembly, with the judiciary, and with the private sector, we'll definitely be able to so achieve you're that. So you're, you're OK? You're happy with the pace? I yes, think because our score, our score improved. That's what's important. Mm -hmm. We have a lot more. We've challenged ourselves. There's a lot more. Last year, we, we increased by about plus 4 percentile, the mark. This year, it was uh, 2 points, or 1.37. But the most important thing is that we're moving in the right direction, both at the federal level and at the sub-national level. We continue and we accelerate that pace, and we continue to build the trust with private sector and accelerate that, that uh, you know, collaboration. Then definitely as an economy, because at the end of the day, it's one economy, and we all have to put in the work. So even as the government delivers reforms, we also try to make sure that private sector are aware and so they can validate them and, more importantly, enjoy the impact. Speaking about yeah. collaboration, I remember reading the World Bank report, and the World Bank did say that uh, going forward it would like to see uh, countries who are neighbors learn from one another. For instance, mm -hmm. like in Rwanda and in Uganda, if Rwanda scored maybe like 140 in a certain uh, indicator and um, Uganda scored less, that perhaps Uganda can learn from uh, in Rwanda. Is that something that could help Nigeria? Is that something you'd look yeah. to do? So for Nigeria, what we look at, beyond looking at neighbors, we look at similar economies that have the similar level of complexity. So I was in India with my team about uh, a month ago, just looking at, they also have had a subnational intervention. I was uh, in England, I met with the Indonesian, uh, uh, my um, uh, counterpart okay. from okay. Indonesia. And they were able to move about 50 steps. And what, again, we don't focus on is so much just the indicators. So for Indonesia, for instance, moving 50 steps, it wasn't that they were focusing on the reforms, on the, on the indicators per se. They were focusing on removing a lot of the licensing bottlenecks, a lot of the procedural things, really going after the pain points. We're doing a lot of work now on our regulators because we've had a lot of strong feedback about our regulators and the behavior of some of our regulators. Mm -hmm. We want to be responsive to private sector. We want to address the real pain points for private sector. And then things like ranking naturally fit into place. place. Yeah.
Jumaken, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate all that insight uh, on the on Pebek. Thank you for your time today. That was Jumaken Oduwale, Secretary of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council. She's also the Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President on Industry, Trade and Investment. Well, that's all we have on today's show. As always, you can watch all previous episodes of Beyond Markets on our website at cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Markets and you can follow my Twitter handle too at Esther O. Awuni. From myself and the team, thank you for watching and have a wonderful evening.